Hi everyone, I'm Kent Louie, science teacher and talking head. Talking about science education and broadcasting from beautiful Vancouver, Canada. This is episode 89. For some of my science tests, I get students to write arguments using the CER, or Claim Evidence Reasoning, format. Now typically what I do is I give students some data, like a graph or a chart. And in this case, I give them some pie charts. Okay? And I have them write an argument to a question I pose about this data. The argument, the question, actually is down here. Okay? But recently, I decided to give students a debate question to answer on a test. Again, using the CER format. To prepare for this question, I had students do some background reading. I wanted them to read news articles, research articles, websites related to the debate question. And since they were going to do some reading anyway, since they were going to do some independent research, I thought it would be a good idea to also get students to work on two more science skills, evaluating sources and writing arguments. Thus, I had students do the following two activities while they were doing their readings. Number one, I wanted them to do argument mapping. And number two, I wanted them to do something called the crap test. All right, I'm going to go into both of them a little bit more in a second. But before I continue, handouts for this episode are available at realsciencechallenge.com slash EP89. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay? The debate question that I gave students was this. This was my on my genetics test, by the way. All right? So here's the, here's the question. It said, do we need more control and by control, I mean regulations and restrictions, or less control of CRISPR technology. Okay, th by the way, this is one of the questions. I had two questions, two different versions. All right? So this is one of them. And I didn't tell students the questions ahead of time. Instead, I got students to acquire some background information on genetic engineering in, in general okay, by reading up on one of two topics that they can choose from. Okay? They can read up on genetic therapy, or they can read up on genetically modified foods. Right? To make sure they were reading actively, critically, I gave students the CRAP test to perform on the articles they read. Okay, so CRAP stands for, here it is, uh, currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. So this is the worksheet I gave them. It's all here. Okay? It's used to evaluate how reliable a source is. Uh, and so when students read an article, I wanted them to evaluate that reliability. And I asked them to read four different sources. So they could have read uh, from a website, uh, a news article, a research paper. They could have watched a video or a podcast on, let's say, GMOs or gene therapy. And for each of those sources, they had to go through this test. Okay? Each category, so for currency, there's some questions related to currency. Relevance, some questions related to relevance. They had to give a score out of three for each of these categories and then tally it up at the bottom to see what the overall reliability of that source is. Okay? Now this has all been modified from similar sources found online, but what I did is I added this part where, they where, where I asked for the source information. Okay? So first task, evaluating source reliability. Okay? After building up some background knowledge using that crap test, I gave students the argument mapping assignment, and it looks something like this. Okay? Now I came across this when I was doing some research on critical thinking strategies. Okay? So argument mapping is supposed to get students to analyze how an argument is structured, so they can hopefully be able to structure their own arguments uh, better. Okay? So here is a handout of different structures of, uh, of, or different models of arguments. Okay? So the general structure is up here, and here's an example. And we go through like the good or the better or the best model uh, as well. And by good, I mean you know, uh, an argument where it's saying that this object is good. Uh, by better, I mean um, an argument where it says that this object is better than this object. And the best would be this object is the best. Right? So all this stuff, all these models are taken off a resource, again, that I found online and basically just modified for my students. And after we go through this, then I get students to map out what are their resources. All right? Tell me which resource it is, right? and then create an argument map for that one. All right? So by the end of all this, by the end of the crap test and the argument uh, mapping, they're hopefully pretty prepared. 
Okay, so on their test, I also tell students that they're allowed to use this if they want to, but fewer than a third of my students actually decide to do so. Most of my kids just decided to use what they remember, okay? And here's a tentative result, okay? From the test, all right? Uh, this is actually answering the second question, the other debate question, but just take a look at how much was written, okay? And this is standard, actually. A lot of students actually filled up the whole page, and there's actually two pages, that's blank, but they filled up a lot of detail, which tells me that, uh, you know, number one, my students actually did prepare for this question, but also, number two, I'm, I'm hoping that they got some practice, okay, evaluating sources and mapping arguments, and that's why they were able to kind of put so much into this debate question. Right? That's it for this episode. Please give this a try with your kids. And also, smash the like or subscribe button or leave a comment below and hand us once again our realsciencechallenge.com slash EP89. Thanks for watching. And let's talk science education again soon.